organizations. He actually comes to the University of Florida. He has two degrees there. We won't say anything. <laughs> You're booby. That's yes, allowed. It's, uh, you have a Bachelor yeah, of History right. and a Master's in Sport Management from the University of Thank Florida. Um, he has experience in working for the University Athletic Association. He's also worked for as a consultant with CSE for a variety of very famous brands, including very famous sport brands such as the NHL. He's worked with the Olympics. He's worked with AT&T, Coca-Cola. Yep. So he's really had a lot of experience within the sport industry. And so he, we're very lucky to, today to have him here to share with us his experience and to talk about CSE and what's going on probably with that organization. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Hey, it's great to see everybody. Um, it's always nice to be invited back. So thank you. You should be booing me because we have a big game next week, right? So booing me is passion, and that's what we're selling here as sports marketers. So you should really dislike the University of Florida, okay? But I, as a peace offering, have today a fabulous door prize for you, okay? Vince Dooley, former coach of the University of Georgia, athletic director. I have a signed Vince Dooley book for the person who does not sell me out and string me out and not ask me a question. So the person who is most participatory today will win this fabulous prize, all right? Now, it is Dooley's Playbook, the 34 most memorable plays in Georgia football history. So I got Vince Dooley to sign a handful of books because we were just here a couple weeks ago for college game day. I've got a clip that I want to show you there. But as I asked Coach Dooley to sign this book, he spent a really long time signing mine. And I thought that was weird. Why would he spend a lot of time signing mine? And what he had done is he said, to my Gator friend Adam, you will love this book, except for page 14, 18, 22, 28, 35, 42, and 56. Every time y'all beat Florida, he made sure and called out my personal copy. So. <laughs> but I want, I've got four things today that I want to talk to you guys about. First thing is I want to talk to you a little bit about our company, based in Atlanta, Georgia, um, you know, I'm president of marketing for an agency. So for a lot of you, as you think about careers in sports marketing, uh, a lot of people want to go work for pro teams. A lot of people want to be agents. So one of the things that I want to always bring to your attention is there, there are a lot of people out in the industry that do what I do, which is work with teams and leagues and corporations in various sponsorship and sports marketing efforts. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Second thing is, is I wanted to show you all a couple of case studies of recent work that we've been, uh, that we've been doing to kind of show you how we think as professionals. And one of the case studies that I'm going to show you is our work on college game day. So we were just here a couple of weeks ago doing some work for Home Depot, but I'm going to show you the work that we did for Coca-Cola around Section Zero that we did here a few weeks ago. Also talk to you a little bit about Sunday Night Football, which is a program that Ashley Hutchins, who uh, I'm going to have her talk a little bit as well, works on as part of a team. Ashley is important for a number of reasons. Uh, she's been a great employee for us, but just a year ago, she sat in this very classroom. So I want to talk a little bit about how, in the light, latter part of my presentation, how you guys can network, how you guys can start to make connections, which ultimately will land you a job, all right? And then the last thing that I'm going to talk about is a couple issues that are happening in sports right now. Um, one of which is going to hit, uh, do we have any student athletes in the audience today? Okay. So there's a lot of talk about the NCAA. And there's a lot of movement. Um, a lot of college athletes are protesting. Um, some of you might be familiar with All Players United. A lot of Georgia football players, for example, are wearing it on their uniforms. Grambling, if some of you are familiar with what just happened at Grambling University, it's a hot bush button issue right now, so I want to talk a little bit about that. And I also want to talk about something we're studying a lot, which is connectivity in stadiums. And people are very interested in your generation isn't going to live sporting events like you used to. So many of you have been in Sanford Stadium, you can't enable your device, right? You can't text, you can't receive. It's a big trend, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, any questions before I get started? All right, let's jump in. I'll put that big power G up there just for you guys. Hope you appreciate that. All right, so here are some different things 
that our company is doing actively each and every day. 200 people based in Atlanta, Georgia, group CSE, you can go online, you can check us out. So you see as you come across, we started out first over here. So when people typically think about agencies, you think about representing athletes, doing endorsement deals, etc. So we do that. We actually do a lot of work for Coach Rick uh, as it relates to his marketing efforts. So representing broadcasters, representing baseball players, representing broadcasters, increasingly female athletes, uh, that's a part of what we do and that's still a mainstay of the industry. Media production, increasingly creating content, whether that's programming that you might see on ESPN 30 for 30, or a little vignettes, or web content, or I'm going to show you a piece of content that we used around game day. That is an emerging area of sports marketing and focus. So people who are creating content, who are filmmakers, or who are just capturing content when you're out at events. That's a big part of what we're doing now. Digital, you can't be working in our field right now and not be thinking through digital executions. You people have a distinct advantage because you're what we call digital natives. You've come up your whole life. You're connected to your devices. You understand Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn and all those platforms innately. And so that is something that we're working on each and every day for, uh, for our clients is digital extensions, digital connections. So those of you that have an interest, those of you that are programmers, those of you that are astute in social media, that's a real plus for you as you enter the job market. Advertising. It used to be that advertising agencies would come up with the campaign, i.e. marketing a brand, and then us as sports marketing professionals would come underneath and sort of work within that. But increasingly, we're getting the opportunity to think about what those advertising platforms are. So when Coke Zero is advertising in College Game Day, when Home Depot is advertising in College Game Day, they would turn to us as sports professionals to really help them think through what's going to connect with you guys as Georgia fans, as college football fans. And the last, and certainly not least, is a whole plethora of things that we put under marketing. Do I have everybody in here who's a finance major? Okay. Those of you that are finance majors are really hot right now, okay? So keep that. Uh, having finance, having that as a part of your background is very important because clients want to see how they are paying for things, what sort of return on investment they're getting, modeling things, so forth and so on. So the whole field of analytics, not just applied to statistics, but applied to financial modeling, very, very keen right now for emerging sports professionals. Cause, uh, and when I say cause, it is such things as, you know, uh, you see right now in the NFL, what are all the players doing every Sunday? What are they wearing? Pink. Why are they wearing pink? Breast cancer awareness. Right, breast cancer awareness. So increasingly, you're seeing cause and sports come together in a meaningful way. Got any NASCAR fans out here? So, no you're not? Not a NASCAR fan? Okay. So, one NASCAR team just signed a driver who has type 2 diabetes. And then guess what they did? They went out and they carved a partnership with the Diabetes Association and Eli Lilly, which has a drug that talks about diabetes, and put that all together. So, increasingly, if you're passionate about a cause, you can marry that cause with sports marketing. Real emerging field. Uh, and similar to that, even though I don't really think of it as a cause, is sustainability. Who knows what sustainability is? Yes, ma'am. It's um, like a business plan that would make sure that if you're when you're going throughout your actions, you're leaving it so people after you and the world happy. Exactly right. Exist. Exactly um, right. And so, you know, it, it's being environmentally friendly. It's, it's, it's thinking about, you know, uh, what your footprint is if you're executing events. Um, there's a lot of things that go into sustainability, being green, being environmentally friendly. So that's something that uh, is a, a real interest and something that actually we just executed a few weeks ago with Southern Company, Georgia Power, because they're a utility company and they want to talk to you about energy and energy relations.
events and experiential, we have a lot of people who are working each and every day in creating and executing events. So that is a mainstay of our business that's never going to go away. The fact that people go out each and every day and put on events and make sure that they're flawless. So those of you that are event professionals, still the cornerstone of our business. Everything else supports live event. Multicultural. You know, uh, you can't talk about uh, marketing today without recognizing by the end of 30 to staff, by the end of the next, next decade, the majority of families in America will be mixed race. Whether that's black, white, whether that's white, Asian, black, Asian, whatever that is, that is where we're headed. Um, the emerging Hispanic, uh, you know, segment in our population, African Americans, all of that together has really fundamentally made us as marketers recognize what America is and what America will be in the next 10 to 15 years. So you're seeing robust multicultural platforms, whether it be the Atlanta Football Classic that our company just executed in Atlanta a couple weeks ago, which is a historically black college game, or, bless you, or corporations looking for those hooks from a Hispanic or African American uh, perspective. PR, still in a, a huge part of our business, and increasingly PR is coming into what we call community management. So there's a whole lot of jobs out there, you people who are PR majors, um, in PR online and in managing social media communities. I'll get into that in a little bit, but a whole new hook in PR. Sponsorships, obviously, is what I'm here to talk to you about today. Corporations that are sponsoring things, whether that be Georgia football, whether that be the NCAA tournament, why are corporations sponsoring still an emerging huge business for us? $15 billion spent in the United States on sponsorships alone, probably 55 to 60 billion globally. And then social media. Uh, you know, that is a huge part of what we're doing right now in our field. There's a lot of jobs and opportunities there. I put that up there just to show you all all the different areas where people get hired in sports marketing and sports management. That's a sub-segment of what our company does, but I also wanted those of you that come from different backgrounds or have different interests to understand that our field continues to expand. Okay? All right, let's move into some case studies. Okay, I kind of took you through what I wanted to talk about today, so let's jump into it. Let's see if we can play this video. Is there volume? Like jump off a couch real quick, play some beer pong when we didn't call it beer pong. 
uh, jump over some laundry, and then race back, okay? And what we wanted to do is the fastest times got an opportunity to be in section zero. So if you were at game day, physically, you saw this, it out there, or if you watched it on TV, the students that got to be in that participated in this, uh, this, cost, this uh, what we did every week, uh, and we, we did in Georgia a couple weeks ago, this contest. So uh, we do that every week as a way to kind of engage you guys and to have some fun. And increasingly, we're creating content pieces, which sadly didn't work today to show you. But having Coach Dooley come out and coach, we thought would be fun and a way that we could create a piece of content that we can send out through social media. So college game day and why does Coke Zero want to be a part of it? It's really because they want to get you guys in this room involved and engaged and Coke Zero drinkers. So when a corporation decides what sponsorship to do, they do a ton of research. They figure out who their logical target might be and then they go after it. So how many of you watched the NCAA tournament? Okay. So hopefully you saw that Coke Zero had a huge presence in the NCAA tournament. And that turned out so well for them that they said, well, what are these college students doing if they're sports fans when they're not watching the tournament? They're watching college football. Where do we need to be in college football? We need to be in college game day. So that's what we did this year. Uh, we travel with college game day every week. We do events and activities like the combine. We're trying to build out that section zero. How many of you guys saw section zero? Do you see it physically or do you see it on TV? Physically, all right. So if you see College Game Day on Saturday mornings, we usually try to position it as like the best seat in the house so that you have a great view of the guys and you're literally 50 feet from the talent and you get to interact with the talent. So what we're trying to build out with College Game Day and Section Zero is this idea that only Coke Zero can provide for you, Georgia fans, whether you play Clemson away or whether you host LSU at home, this unbelievable seat, access, opportunity, and that that hopefully forges a connection for you to either continue drinking Coke Zero or to maybe give it a try, all right? So how many of you have noticed Coke Zero advertising as you watch College Game Day? All right, so you're gonna see more of it, and increasingly what we want you guys to be able to do is engage with us socially and digitally. So we're creating hashtag Section Zero, we're exploring how we take a fixed presence on College Game Day set, and when we go to various campuses, we have a Section Zero at Sanford Stadium. We have a Section Zero at Alabama, which would be this incredible all-access VIP type of area where you guys could be a part of it. All right? So a little bit about why Coke Zero is involved in the NCAA and a couple of little pieces of activation. Any questions on... Section Zero on College Game Day? Remember, I'm giving a book away. All right, so we'll move in quickly to the next case study. We'll talk a little Sunday Night Football. Uh, here's a couple of footprints. You saw a little bit of that. Sadly, the video didn't come out the way I wanted it to, but this is what we set up every Saturday when we go to a college campus. It is a combine, we play music, we have a DJ, we have celebrities come out. And again, it is an engagement thing where we're trying to get you to come out, participate, get timed, and the fastest kids get a chance to go in Section Zero. We set that up every, every week. Similarly, we set up Section Zero every week at College Game Day, prominently placed on TV, continuing to think about how we reward people. Who do we put in Section Zero? Because you get to meet Herb Street and Desmond Howard and David Pollack and the various celebrity pickers and so forth. So we're, first year we're testing, we're learning, so that next year we can make it even bigger and better. And then some of you might have seen these cruising around Athens a couple weeks ago. These are sampling vehicles that we drive around, we hit up tailgates, so if you're hanging out and you want something else to drink, we give you a Coke Zero so you can test it. So that's part what we're trying to do is get you to experience uh, Coke Zero, and then when we go to these campuses, 
actually physically hand out the product so you can enjoy it and maybe buy it next time you go to the grocery store. I have a question. Yes, did CSC negotiate that relationship between Game Day and Coke Zero, or how did that? A part of a coalition. So, you know, with, with projects like this, there are a handful of agencies that would participate. Um, the lead agency to negotiate this, because College Game Day starts as a media buy, um, so you would go and you would get your advertising from ESPN. So that is led primarily by the media agency that would buy the 30 second spots in the media. But then all of us would chip in and say, don't just buy 30 second spots. When you negotiate with ESPN, get them to give us a fixed presence every, every week we go. So we just don't want to buy advertising on ESPN. We want this thing that we can then create and market and merchandise. So there are probably a couple of big, big time suitors for that. And then you guys, they outbid them basically. Absolutely yeah. right. You know, and, and you also, in these situations too, you know, Home Depot's lead dog. They've been for forever, right? It's built by the Home Depot. And then they look for other people that are gonna be compatible with Home Depot. So Coke certainly is. And there's a logical connection between Coke and Home Depot. Because if you're going into Home Depot and you're gonna work on your deck, they want you to buy some water or buy some Cokes when you go home and work. And then similarly, AT&T is an increasing big sponsor of College Game Day as well. But great question because one of the other things we have to do is if ESPN <coughs> guarantees me my spot, at University of Georgia, Coke has a relationship uh, with the school. So it's easy for me to figure out how to get these to go around. But what happens when I go to a Pepsi school? They restrict me in what I can do. So there's a lot of sports marketing subtleties. When we come to campus, sometimes we have what's called rights, the ability to put our stuff where we want to, and at other times we have to be clever. Here at Georgia, you know, we could put our stuff all over the campus as we wanted to. In other areas, we might have to put them at frat houses that are across the street from campus, or maybe a bar or a restaurant that's going to be heavily trafficked. So that's sort of what goes into it. Yes, sir? What is your, what is CSE's relationship with like Coke Zero and other Big corporations like they work with you. They work with you to ensure that they're getting their maximization of what they're exactly right. You know, so before you do a project like this, you sit down and Coca-Cola <coughs> says, "Okay, here's why we want to be involved in college football." You know, our target is watching college football. They're avid week in and week out. We want to, you know, really increase their purchase of our product. How do we do that? We advertise to them. We sample to them. We put ourselves in situations where they encounter us, they think we're cool, you know, a lot of different things that we go in and we measure how well did we do. So my job is to understand what's going to make my client successful and make it happen. And then also to figure out all of this, the subtleties that when we go to a different campus and we travel, the logistics, how things execute, we don't get in trouble, we have rights, all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Do you personally travel every single week? I used to. You know, and, and that is something I always tell people as you get into this field, you're going to travel. Your weekends are going to be gone. You're going to work late nights. So for those of you that, you know, you have to really, some of you probably have event experience. I mean, it's, it's holidays, it's weekends, it's late nights. Because think about when do most major events happen. They happen on holidays, they happen on the weekends, et cetera, et cetera. But I have a team of people that will go out every week and travel with the tour. Any other questions on, on College Game Day? <laughs> now, the, one of the other things, too, that you'll see is before we leave College Game Day is we've cut a deal with each of the talent. So Pollock, we've done an endorsement deal with Pollock and with Herb Street and with Samantha Ponder and all the rest of them because we want them to do things for us. That used to be when you deal with athletes and celebrity, just I want you to show up somewhere, sign autographs, get your picture taken. Increasingly, it is, I want you to tweet about what we're doing. I want you to participate in this content, as I tried to show you with what we did with Coach Dooley. Because you want to get more bang for your buck, you want people to be doing more when you're working with celebrities. So a big part of this, too, is working each and every week with Pollock and Desmond Howard and all the talent to help us push our program to let people know what we're doing. Okay? All right, let's move into Sunday Night Football. Okay, Ashley, can you talk a little bit about this one? Yeah, I can do this. Okay. 
So Sunday Night Football, actually, by the way. This is, for, this is so weird for me. I graduated <laughs> in May. Like, I, I was here in May. It's so weird. Um, so this is the biggest project I've worked on so far. Um, the Sunday Night Football program last year was just, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Follow the Ball. So each week we have the players of the game sign a matchup ball. And this ball would go from market to market and each player would sign it. So this past year we said to NBC, you know, how can we, how can we blow this out for you? Um, college game day, for example, any time the college game day group or bus is in town, you want to be there, right? When game day was in Athens, like all of my friends were there. I wasn't there because I was doing this in Atlanta, but you know, everyone wants to come to game day. So we said, NBC, how can we blow this out for you? So we're going to make a bus, put a bunch of players on it, put Kara Underwood on it, and have this interactive market-to-market -market experience. So this bus goes to every single Sunday Night Football game. We have two drivers that are on the bus for 17 weeks. We have a tour manager, Lindsay McCormick. Uh, she's sort of the face of the program. And we take the bus, so the bus was just in Indianapolis, and the whole weekend we had events. And the local affiliates would come and do interviews on the bus, and former players would come check out the bus. So it's really, it's like a, um, a moving billboard, really, uh, for Sunday Night Football and for NBC. So here's an example in Atlanta. We took the bus to the aquarium and had one of the dolphins play with the balls. Like, yeah, that actually just, happened. That's not a stage. No, picture. that totally happened. I watched it. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> There you go. We also have fans of the week. So each week we select two fans from each team. And so part of my job is to manage the relationship between these fans. So we pick them from Twitter. And they have um, a huge following. They have really high cloud scores. And we have them so participate. Does anyone know what a cloud score is? It's how much of a present challenge. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, there, there's a methodology in place that really sort of looks at your Twitter followings and figures out, like, how impactful you are, how many people you can reach through Twitter. So that's part of what Ashley's talking about is that these super fans, we also studied them and said, wow, that guy not only does he have a lot of followers, but he's got followers who have a lot of followers. Okay. And all he's talking about are the Giants or the Patriots. So obviously we want him to be a part of this experience so that he can – push out to his followers, hey, look what I'm doing. Look at what Sunday Night Football and NBC has done for me. You know, I have field passes to the game. I have this exclusive tour of the aquarium or of the Metro Dorm Dome in Minnesota this weekend. So um, these fans are acting, again, as NBC's kind of social ambassadors, and it's just another way to generate excitement yeah. for the program and for the games and the markets each week. Yeah, so Ash is exactly right. You know, so when you sit down with a client, we had an opportunity to talk to, to NBC about what they're doing. Sunday Night Football is the biggest, baddest program in America. Okay? Ratings-wise, there is nothing that gets the audience that Sunday Night Football does. But still, they weren't satisfied. They said, cool, it's, it's advertising, but what we want to do is when Sunday Night Football comes to Atlanta, Georgia, to what Ashley's point was, is we want that feeling to be like when college game day comes to Athens. Yeah? We want that excitement, like, holy crap, our team got Sunday Night Football, this is cool. And that week is all about the Falcons playing the Patriots. It's not just about tuning in on Sunday night and watching the game. It's about what happens, <laughs> what happens around town, you know, what are you doing, and how can increasingly sponsors be able to use this to promote what they're going to want to do. Um, so as, you know, as we've talked about, huge social component, because we want people to be aware that Sunday Night Football is happening, and you might get a chance to come out and meet Roddy White, because he's going to be with the bus in front of the varsity, you know, in downtown Atlanta for an hour. Uh, you know, you can win merchandise, you can win tickets, we show up at schools, we go to hospitals. Um, I know we talked about NASCAR uh, before. Anybody know what a show car tour is? No NASCAR fans? No. So what NASCAR does is they do what's called a show car tour, which is the driver and the automobile actually physically go and set up. So before the race happens on Sunday, you can go meet the driver, you can see the car, etc. So it's a little bit of that thinking, but it's really about market takeovers and helping out the NBC affiliates and giving them a leg up on their competition with their local advertisers. All right. So pretty comprehensive program that, again, 
travels across the entire country. But I wanted you again, hopefully you're extracting from these case studies, all the different jobs that are available with programs like this. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Yep. Um, two questions. Yep. How long does it take to typically put a project like this together? And you said you say you're on the road. How many um, 